I thought there was a version of this question where it's with an electron and it's going to be, um, it was going to be uh, uh, relativistic. So you had to take relativity into account. Um, so for this question, um, so these are, this is the number sense that I have developed, um, which is that uh, with the proton, the, the, the mass of the proton is approximately about a thousand mega electron volt per C squared. That's the, um, that's related to the rest energy of proton. So when we give a proton this much kinetic energy or this much kinetic energy, it's uh, basically going to be a non-relativistic amount of energy because it's much, much smaller than the rest energy of proton. So we can just use um, a non-relativistic formula. So we can just say, okay, kinetic energy of the proton is equal to one half m v squared, solve this for, um, or actually since we'll be going for wavelength and we will want to use the de Broglie relationship, momentum of a particle is related to its wavelength by uh, Planck's constant divided by lambda or the version rule one here, wavelength is Planck's constant divided by momentum. Let me rewrite kinetic energy in terms of momentum. In terms of momentum, it's momentum squared over 2n. Again, non-relativistic expression. So, um, so I can solve this for momentum, which is going to be square root of 2 times m times kinetic energy that will give. Um, and then after I know this value of momentum, plug it in here to get the wavelength. So the main quantity that I need to know, uh, so this is approximate value of proton momentum, but a uh, proton mass, but I think it'll be off by enough that I can just use it. Let me look it up in on Oframe Alpha. So I'm looking for proton mass. And one of the units they give me is, will be the electron volt unit that I will want. So let me program this in as the proton mass. Uh, MP is equal to 938.272 mega uh, electron volt per C squared. So I'll put this in the unit of electron volt. So times 10 to the power of 6. So with that, uh, I can now go back and do the rest of the calculation. So let me just uh, pre work some of the units here and uh, and uh, I'll figure out the factor of C that I need later. So when you write out the unit in this expression, um, this is what we are going to have. Um, so we'll have mass in the unit of electron volt per C squared. We'll have kinetic energy in the unit of electron volt. And I'm gonna take square root. So for the momentum, we'll have that in the unit of electron volt per C, uh, electron volt squared per C squared, square root it, that's momentum. So here, when I plug in the value of Planck's constant in a unit of electron volt times a second, and plug in the value of momentum in electron volt per C, what you will see is that, oh, electron volts cancel out. I don't have to deal with that. But I have uh, 1 over 1 over C, or working out the nested fraction, C in the unit of meters per second times a second. So uh, to get to this length unit of picometers, I'll have to plug in the value of C to, so, so this is the unit that, that the wavelength will be in. So um, to convert this to <laughs> the unit of meters, um, so I have the way, so when I'm all done uh, with this numerical calculation, the, uh, so let me do this. Let me do this numerical calculation first, and then you will see how uh, dividing by C will uh, make sense, I think. So uh, let's just plug in the numbers. Um, so, for the momentum of the proton, I'll have square root of 
2 times the mass of the proton times uh, the energy that we are putting in 1.9 mega electron volt so that will give me the value of the momentum so given the value of momentum Planck's constant divided by the value of the momentum will give me some number that is going to be in the um that's going to be in the unit of uh, c times a second so oh so this is uh, how i to imagine yeah okay good i good thing i didn't work out all the expression before <laughs> so so th this is what i have to imagine uh i have my wavelength in this unit in the unit of, so the the numerical value is a 6.92 times 10 to the minus 23 and i have this weird unit of c times a second and i would like to get this to the unit of uh, meters so the thing to do is you know this is it's a variable it's a, a quantity that stands for three times 10 to the eight meters per second so if i simply plug in this value seconds will cancel out and the remaining unit will be meters so all I have to do here is take this value, multiply it with a C. I already put in a value of C earlier. Then the answer I get, that is in meters. So now I have to convert it to picometers. Um, I believe a, a picometer is 10 to the minus 12 meter. I think, yeah, nano, pico, yeah. So I have to take this number, multiply with the power of uh, 10 to the 12, that'll convert from my unit of meters to picometers. So a um, uh, proton of this much kinetic energy has this much, this much wavelength of zero, uh, 0 0.021 picometer. Wait, that's not enough. 0 0.0208 picometer. 0 0.0208 picometer, uh, three significant figures. Um, let's just double check that I didn't make a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so with that, uh, let's just use this exact same process for the next part. Because 12 mega electron volt, it's still non-relativistic amount of energy. It should be fine to still use the same process without making correction for relativity. So 12 mega electron volt of energy. That will give me momentum. Uh, let me do Planck's constant divided by momentum. That will give me my wavelength in this weird unit of c times a second so i need to uh, plug in the value of c to get the um, answer in correct unit well basic si unit of meter and i have to since the question wants answer in picometers i need to multiply it by 10 to the power of 12 um, to get answer in picometers so 0 0.00826 So it's a you know number sense question. It's not meant to be complicated, and it's not. So the question is asking for De Broglie wavelength. Uh, we are going to be using the De Broglie hypothesis, which relates the wavelength to the momentum of the thing, whether microscopic or macroscopic. Um, and for this football player, I'm given the player's mass and the uh, velocity so it looks like it'll be simplest to just to say oh momentum this is non-relativistic speed it's equal to mass times velocity and uh, that's all the, the expression we need so the wavelength should be Planck's constant divided by mass times velocity now the only thing here is um, so in terms of the numbers that I have available uh, when you uh, work out the uh, units for this thing Planck's constant will be electron volt times a second and the uh, uh, downstairs will be mass kilogram times the velocity meters per second and you know, none of these units to work out and i guess uh, you might believe that as if this was somehow uh, change to joule then all those si units will work out to give me unit of meter and that's right so really what i have to do 
uh, once I get to this step, have a numerical answer in this really um, weird unit. Uh, what I need to do is multiply this by the one electron volt is uh, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joule. Uh, you know, electron volt is the unit that makes sense for microscopic things, for macroscopic football player. I just want to convert it to joule so that um, so that um, I think I can believe joule times a second divided by this will just magically work out to be meters. So so let me do that. Um, I have the numbers. I think almost all the numbers. Let's just plug in uh, Planck's constant. So Planck's constant. It's already in in the unit of electron volt times second. Divide by the mass of the football player, 110 kilogram times um, the speed of the football player, 8.5 meters per second. So the answer I get here is in the weird unit of electron volt times second per kilogram times meter per second. So let's uh, convert electron volt by multiplying this by 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19. And That'll give me an answer in basic SI units. Looks like uh, I want the thing that once I multiply by 10 to the power of minus 36 will give me this quantity. So I take this, multiply by 10 to the power of 36. So that's the mantissa for this scientific notation. 0 0.708. Let me double check. 0 0.708. So this is a fantastically small wavelength. Um, I, I think, I don't remember often if this is smaller than the Planck wavelength, but if it's not there already, it's uh, close enough to um, the small enough length scale where there isn't really a physical meaning we can assign to it. So, you know, we are never going to experimentally measure the wavelength of a football player. It's a kind of an, an absurd range where we assume De Broglie hypothesis is still valid, but I don't know how you would experimentally verify that. 